this as well so I can share it and stick this one onto YouTube. So let's come to sit for a moment. Let's bring the little toes into the ground. Bring the palms so that they face upwards and lift them up and up and up through the crown of the head. So I'm going to begin today's session with a couple of rounds of OM just to kind of clear stuff that's, you know, that might be, I don't know about everybody else, but you know, with lockdown, sometimes we feel a little bit bleh. So we're just going to do a couple of rounds of OM. You don't have to join in. If you don't want to join in, take a couple of deeper breaths, okay? So we're looking to basically clear the pipes, yeah? So if you want to take the physical aspect of why we're chanting, it's yoga for the inside of the body. Obviously, physical practice brings stuff into the inside of the body, but we're really coming in a bit deeper when we chant, okay? So we're going to OM. So we sound the letters A, U, and N. Oh. 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 And then just very gently, if you've chanced it, just let it resonate. And notice now how the breath is, yeah, how there's been that little sort of cleanse of the breath. And let the fingertips come out to the sides. Keep coming up through and through and through the crown of the head. Let's take a breath in. Bring the right arm up and over. Let the left elbow bend. And from here now, relax this left, sorry, this right arm. But feel that you can extend up through here, not from the shoulder, but up through the arm. So you can find some space into the outer ribs. Then gently extend away through the fingertips and bring the hand around and down. Come all the way around. Begin to bring the left hand around. Let the left hand come on to the right knee and come up through the crown of the head. Come back to the center. Up you come now with the left elbow. Bend into the right elbow and really let this arm relax so you're really aware of this part of the arm. Let the shoulder relax down as much as it can into the spine. Then extend lightly away through the fingers Come around, so you've got that rotation through here to open the back of the shoulder all the way around and brings the right hand onto the left knee. Come back to the centre. So the shoulder should begin to feel a little bit more open now. Let the little toes come into the ground, take a breath in, and as you breathe out, let the spine round. Let the chin come in towards the chest. Take a breath in now, open out through the arms and bring the shoulder blades back into the spine. Breathe out, let the spine round. Now as you breathe in and you come up with the crown of the head, open the eyes and imagine that vista, that view that you have in front of you if you were sitting at Marble Hill. So as we come up, we will be looking down the field, towards the river, noticing the eye line, noticing all of the trees, the bushes, the grass, the people walking by. Even if you want to close your eyes now and continue with the movement, but can you see that in the mind's eye? Yeah. And then gently bring the fingertips out to the sides and let the hands rest onto the ground. Tuck the feet in now, come over the knees, curl the toes under and come back into squat pose. Bring your hands together in Namaste. If your balance is a bit squiffy, of course, keep the fingertips on the ground. If not, stay here. And then if you can remember from Marble Hill, 
the big bush is on the left, they'd be to the left of you as the sun would just start creeping over the tops of those bushes and coming around. Let the fingertips now rest onto the ground, send the heels into the ground, lift the thighs up and up and up into the hips, take a big deep breath in and all the way up we come with the spine. Bring the hands together in Namaste. Come forwards, if you're on your mat, come forward. So you've got space behind you. We're gonna start with sun salutation. Take a big deep breath in, let the arms come up as that sun gently creeps over. Breathe out, let the fingertips come down onto the ground. Bring the hands onto the shins, extends the spine forward. Breathe out, lets the fingertips come down. Big step back with the left leg. Come up through the heel, go down into the right foot, keep coming forward with the chest and with the heart. Let the left knee drop down to the ground, stand into the feet, all the way up you come. Tailbone releases down towards the ground. Breathe out, bring the hands down, step back. Into downward dog, in downward dog, bend the knees this morning. Feel that you can extend up through the spine by lifting the hip. So if you imagine you've got a helium balloon, it's a light lift upwards. So you're going more into the hands to extend up into the arms to bring you into the spine. Let the knees bend, come back into child's pose, front of the feet onto the ground. Slide the hands forward, come gently over the knees. So you're coming into a half plank pose this morning and let the feet rotate. Lots of movement into the feet. Can you wiggle the toes, spread through the toes? And then curl the toes under, walk the hands back, come all the way back, up through the knees, down through the heels. And again, keep the knees bent. Come into the little finger, into the thumb, into the heel of the hand, but relax the shoulder blades, let the bottom of the shoulder blades come into the spine so the chest and the heart can come forward. Come down into all fours, come forward now with the left foot. Stand strong into the feet, up you come through the chest and through the heart. Breathe out, let the arms come down. Come into your forward bend, hands onto the shins, extend forward through the spine. Breathe out, release that down, breath comes in and the arms come up. Hands together, in namaste. Up through the arms. Breathe out, release down, fingertips onto the ground, hands onto the shins, extends the spine. Breathe out, releases back down, back with the right foot. Right knee comes down, breath comes in, up you come through the arms. Breathe out, let the arms come down, come back into dog pose. Keep the knees relaxed. So you can really take it off of the hamstrings. As you relax the knees, can you let your thigh muscles relax? Yeah, your bones are gonna keep you in the posture, so don't worry about that. But think about really letting your thighs relax so they can go a little bit wibbly wobbly. Even if you have a little twisty dog moan, have a little wiggle at the hips. Let the knees bend, come back into child's pose. Slide the hands forward, be really gentle coming over the knees and rotate the feet. Curl the toes under, come back again into dog pose. And again, let's go straight into a twisty dog pose. So just imagine, you know, you're wiggling your tail in dog's pose. That's all we're gonna do, have a little wiggle of the tail, just to free up the hips. And then let the knees bend and come forward with the right foot. Big deep breath in, up you come through the arms, goes down through the tail. Breathe out, bring the fingertips down to the ground, come into your forward bend, hands onto the shins, extend forward through the spine, breathe out, release down, breath comes in and the arms come up, bring the hands together, in namaste, in between we're coming up with the left foot, rotating the foot and now coming into the knee. And then let the foot come backwards and forwards. So as the foot comes backwards and forwards, you're gonna bend the knee now. So you're coming back to the thigh, yeah? So you're keeping the bend in the knee, and then bring the foot up, let the foot come onto the shin, open out through the hip. And again, if your balance is a little bit squiffy, keep the big toe on the ground. Come up through the arms. How is the tree this morning? 
Keep standing into the supporting right foot. Bring the hands together. Sorry, bring the foot down. Let the hands come down in front of the chest. Up you come now with the left foot. Come in. Sorry, with the right foot. What's wrong with me? I haven't had enough coffee this morning. Rotate into the ankle, into the toes. Wiggle the toes. Get some movement into those digits because that's going to help you with the balancing because we're going to come back to tree again. Come into the knee. Gently rotating that top of the thigh bone in the hip joint. Yeah, if you're hearing a thunk, it's probably the hip flexor. I think we talked about this a little bit last week. Probably the hip flexor rolling over. Yeah, and then come back as of course. Remember, you're keeping the bend in the knee as you're doing that, but don't kind of let the spine start swinging with it. You really want to feel that that thigh goes back as of course like a pendulum. And then bring the knee up, bring the foot onto the shin and open out through the hip. So it should help to relax the thigh muscle just a little bit, yeah? Up you come through the arms, keep connecting down into that left big toe. So if I'm kind of going out like this, and then I go into the big toe, I come up through the spine. And then bring the hands down in front of the chest and let the foot come onto the ground. So it gives you those little touch points for the sun salutation again. Breath comes in, the arms come up, breathe out. Let the fingertips come down to the ground. Hands onto the shins, extends the spine forward. Breathe out, release down. Big step back with the left foot. Knee comes down to the ground, round the spine, bring the arms forward. Come up through the chest, through the heart, go down through the tailbone. Bring the hands forward, now sweep back and up with the right leg. Stand away through the foot like you're trying to make an imprint with your foot. Yeah, so the foot is really active and you can feel how that opens you through the hip. Bring the foot down to the ground, bend the knees, come back into child's pose. So the hip and the glute should feel a little bit different now. Slide the hands forward, round the spine into cat pose and bring the breastbone forward into cobra. Curl the toes under, come up and over the feet. Now go away through the left foot and that same movement, yet yeah? you're standing away through the foot and into the ball of the right foot. Bend the knee, can you bring the foot between the hands? Let the back knee come down, round the spine, tailbone's going down, you're standing into that left foot, up through the chest and the heart. Fingertips come forward, come into forward bend, hands onto the shins. Extend downwards, breath comes in and the arms come up, hands together in Namaste. Once more up through the arms, breathe out, releases you down, fingertips onto the shins, extends the spine. Breathe out, release back down, back with the right foot. Knee comes down, round the spine, hands come forward, keep standing into that front foot, up through the chest, up through the heart. Hands come forward. Sweep back and up with the left leg. Now stand away through the foot. Even if the foot's here, yeah, still stand away through it. Even if the foot's only two centimetres off the ground. Bring the foot down to the ground, bend the knees, come back into child's pose. Let the hands come forward, round the spine into cat pose, bring the breastbone forward into cobra. Stay in cobra for a moment, close the eyes. Now, if we were in marble heel, that sun would just be coming over that big bush on the left now, and you'd all feel the sun on the chest and on the heart. Curl the toes under, come up and over the feet, relax the knees into your downward dog pose. Stand away through the right foot now, yeah? So we're standing away through the foot to wake up the leg, bend the knee and put the foot between the hands. Let the back knee come down, round the spine, brings the arms forward, up through the fingertips, down through the tailbone, hands come forward, step forward into forward bend, hands onto the shins, extends the spine, breathe out, releases back down, breath comes in and the arms come up, hands come together. 
in Namaste. Straight up again into it, no interim pose this time. Fingertips on the ground, hands on the shins. Extends the spine, releases back down, big step back with the left foot. Left knee comes down to the ground. Backs of the hands onto the cheeks, yeah? So we're gonna do this movement. Stand into the front foot, up with the spine and out through the fingertips. Hands come forward, sweep back and up with the right leg into the air. Remember you're standing away through the foot. Bring the foot down to the ground, bend the knees, come back into child's pose. Slide the hands forward, round the spine, bring the breastbone forward into cobra. Now, you might not have the sun shining on you, but you can still find a nice warm heart center. So imagine that heart center, lovely and warm. Curl the toes under, come up and over the feet into downward dog pose. Relax the knees. Let's really take it off of the hamstrings and the thighs this morning. Up you come with the left leg. So you're standing away through that foot. And then you're going to try bending the knee to the chest and bring the foot forward. Now, if that feels too much, you come into all fours, yeah? And come forward with the foot that way. That knee comes down, strong into the feet, backs of the hands onto the cheek, stand into the foot to bring the spine up, and then up and out through the fingers. Hands forward, into forward bend, hands on the shins, extends the spine. Breathe out, releases down, breath comes in, and the arms come up. So really getting into the feet now. Up we go, breathes out, releases down, hands onto the chins, Breathe out, release back down. Back with the right foot. Right knee comes down, contact into the feet, backs of the hands onto the cheeks, up you come. Out through the fingers, hands come forward. Sweep back and up with the left leg away through the foot. Brings the foot down, bend the knees, come back into child's pose. Slide the hands forward. Round the spine to cat pose, same cat pose, just a little bit longer. So just when you get to here, so you can really feel that lengthening there into the lumbar. Keep that round, keep that round as you bring the spine forward. So the lumbar's still long and up you come through the breastbone now. So you're still coming forward with the breastbone as well as coming up. Curl the toes under, come up and over the balls. Relax the knees, up through the right foot, stand away through the foot. Bend the knee into the chest, foot between the hands or all fours and forward, yeah? Back knee down, backs of the hands onto the cheeks, so you've got to use that foot to bring you up. Fingertips come out, hands come forward, into forward bend, hands on the shins, extend the spine. Breathe out, release down, big deep breath in, all the way up and the hands come together in namaste breath comes in the arms come up breathe out let's the arms come down breath comes in the arms come up breathe out and let's the arms come down in and up so thinking about that connection from the little finger all the way down into the arms and in to the backs of the shoulder, just here, and down into the bottom of the ribs. And then the thumb, it's the connection of the thumb bring you into the front of the shoulder, yeah? So your arms, extensions of the ribs. Big deep breath in. Now breathe out, bring the hands all the way down to the ground, bend the elbows, let each hand hold its opposite elbows, let the knees bend, have a really good dangle here. And then begin to bring the spine up vertebra by vertebra. Keep standing into the feet, vertebra by vertebra as you come up. Now as you come up, remember we just said that the arms are in extension, of the shoulders and therefore of the spine. So you're going to bring the arms up above the head and then come up and out through the fingers. 
really opening into the armpits. Come all the way around, bring the hands together in Namaste, bring the thumbs onto the breastbone and lift the breastbone up into the thumbs, but let the tail go down. Take a big step back with the left foot. So the left heel isn't on the ground. And then come bring the awareness to the right foot. So you're in the big toe joint, the little toe joint, the inner heel, the outer heel. If you glance down at your knee, it's in line with the two middle toes. Come up with the arms, keeping the hands together in Namaste. Now, if this feels a bit wibbly wobbly, if the balance isn't great, you can bring the back foot in and bring the heel onto the ground. Breath comes in and out. Bring the awareness to the elbows now. Can you let the elbows come a little bit more forward? Yep, so they're not going to splay out because that's going to make your shoulders feel really tight. So let them come forward so you open through the backs of the shoulder blades. Now breathe out and bring the fingertips all the way down to the ground. Relax the back knee now, step back into down dog pose. Walk the feet forward. So you come into Uttanasana, breath comes in and up you come. Bring the hands together in Namaste, thumbs onto the breastbone. And again, lift the breastbone up, let the shoulder blades roll into the spine. So these little pointy bits, at the backs of the shoulders. I'm just having a quick look at my bones to see what I've got to hand. Here we go, quickie, quickie. So there you go, bottom of the shoulder blade, yeah? Top of the shoulder blade, arm would be here. So you're thinking about bringing this in towards the spine. And then that lifts you up through the heart and the tail goes down. Take a step back now with the right foot, keep the heel off of the ground, strong into the left foot, up you come with the arms. Gaze comes forward, be in both feet in the big toe joint and the little toe joint of the back foot and coming onto the ball of the back foot. And then the front foot, the same, but also into the heel, kneecaps in line with the two middle toes. Tail goes down, breastbone come right underneath the bottom of the breastbone, lift upwards from there. Let the elbows come inwards. Let the arms drop back into the shoulder sockets. Breathe out, bring the hands down to the ground and step back into down the dog pose. Helium balloon right underneath the belly. Lifting, lifting, lifting you up. So you're making a lightness here, which makes your tail feel lovely and long and your sacrum feel open. Let the knees bend, come back into all fours, curl the toes under, and then come straight back into your squat pose. Bring your hands together onto your breastbone. If you can, lift the breastbone up. Let the tail go down towards the ground. Go down to the heels. If you can, come up. Keep a bend into the knees and bring the arms up above the head. But again, remember you've got that into the shoulder joints, yeah? So what that stops you from doing is lifting up from the shoulders, yeah? So into chair pose, Uktanasana. Now bring the hands back together again onto the breastbone, into the whole of the foot to extend the thighs up into the hips. Take a step back now with the left foot. Up you come with the arms, as you breathe out, come forward with the spine, bring the hands onto the sacrum. Keep extending forward with the spine, even though you're beginning to bring it down, maybe just a little bit more. Let the right hand come down to the shin, it might naturally go towards the ankle, but feel that you can keep some space here. Yeah, imagine if you had enough space in your right hip joint to put a tennis ball there, yeah? So you don't close off. Left hand onto the sacrum, rotate around from the rib cage. Up you come with the left arm. Or not, if the left shoulder feels tight, keep the hand on the sacrum. 
As you breathe out, bring the arm down and let the chest come back to the center. As you breathe in, let the arm come up. I'm gonna turn around because I want you to have a look at it sort of from the front on. Because very often in Trikonasana, we start doing this and really pushing back. So feel that you can lengthen up through the arm to keep the back of the shoulder open. Breathe out, bring the arm down. And if you feel that you are pushing back in the shoulder, imagine you're holding one of those really big gym balls. Because the rotation should come up through the feet and into the spine to rotate you from the rib cage rather than using the arm to kind of shift the spine into it, yeah? Now the next time you lengthen up through the fingertips, so my shoulder's feeling a little bit sticky today, so I'm just gonna keep my arm there, but rotate from the rib cage. Let the hand come onto the sacrum, bring the spine back to the center, both hands onto the sacrum. Now let your fingertips come down to the ground, walk your fingertips forward, let your left leg lift up into the air and again stand away through the foot but come forward with the breastbone as much as it feels comfortable for you. Bring the foot down to the ground, let the breath come in, the arms come up, come back into chair pose, let the knees bend. Breath comes in and out. Bring your hands together in Namaste, extend the thighs up, 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 up into the hips. Takes that step back with the right foot. So my feet are about hip distance apart. Up you come with the arms. Breathe out, bring the spine forward. Let the hands come onto the sacrum. And keep coming forward through the breastbone. Let the left hand come down to the grip towards the ankle or towards the shin. Remember you still want to keep some space here, and I've got baggy clothes on today, but you still want to keep some space here in this hip joint. Rotate through the rib cage, up you come with the right arm. Keep letting the spine come forward so the lumbar's got more space, yeah? And then that same movement, as we breathe out, you can bring the arm down, keep coming forward through the spine. Breathe in and up you come with the arm. Breathe out, let's the arm come down. Breathe in, let's the arm come up. So as you're breathing in, you're opening the ribs so the shoulder blade's going to move. And it helps to bring the arm up. So when you breathe in that, there's a very natural, light little movement of a lift in the arm. Very subtle movement. So as the spine rotates, it opens us all the way through that back hip, lengthen away and up through the fingertips. Let the hand come onto the sacrum, come back to the center, both hands onto the sacrum, let the arms swing. Let the fingertips come down to the ground and stand away through the foot. Bring the foot down to the ground. Take a breath in and up you come with the arms. Bring the hands together in Namaste. Let's come back to tree pose. So think of that skyline, yeah, at Marble, or you might have a favorite tree in a park or somewhere where you've been walking. So we're gonna stand onto the right foot and imagine the tree. Up you come with the left knee, bring the foot onto the shin, and open it out through the hip. So think about the shape of your tree. Yeah, it might be really bushy, and you might want to go out into the arms, yeah? It might be very, very tall, more like a birch tree with little branches, yeah? It might just be your baby tree, it might be a little sapling, yeah? So think about what sort of tree you are today. And then lift the left knee, go back through the foot, let the pelvis come over the thigh and come forward with the spine. So where you've just done Trikonasana, you've got that revolve in the pelvis. Now let the fingertips come down to the ground, 
Stand in both feet. So stand in the right foot and then back through the left foot. So you can feel that brings an energy into the pelvis. Let the foot come down. Then the knees come into your squat pose. So notice how the right feels compared to the left, yeah, where that right foot's been really supported from the right side of the body. Bring the fingertips down to the ground. Send the heels into the ground. Lift the thighs up into the hips. And up you come through the spine. Bring the hands together in Namaste. Come up now with the right foot. Bring the foot onto the shin. Have that picture of your tree in your mind open out through the hip. Up through the arms, wherever your branch is. So your feet, the roots, the legs, your torso, the trunk of the tree, the arms, the head, the branches, yeah? And then let the right foot extend back, let the pelvis roll over the thigh, so you then come in to your warrior three. And remember, you can bring your fingertips straight down to the ground if you want to, yeah? If the balance is a bit squiffy, and then we're all going to bring the fingertips down to the ground and let the right foot come down and come back into our squat pose. Bring the hands together in Namaste. Let your right elbow come round to your left knee and gently bring the hands into each other. Yeah? So it's not forceful press, you're letting them connect. Yeah? And then there's a little bit more connection, connection, connection. So you can see, if I'm here, I'm not doing really anything with the hands, but then if I come into the hands, it brings me into the shoulders. And then come around, let the left elbow sit onto the right knee. And come around, I know the ankles might be beginning to feel a little bit fatigued. But squat pose is really good because it really strengthens the ankles. So it helps us when we're supporting the rest of the body. It comes back to the center, bring the fingertips into the ground, go down into the heels, lift the thighs up into the hip. Have a look at your ankles. Feel you can lift the shins off of the ankles. What does that do to the spine? Maybe the spine comes a little bit more forward. And then maybe we can walk the feet back a little bit. Can we bring the whole of the hands onto the ground, even if we have to bend the knees? And keep coming back. And we relax the elbows, let the shoulder blades come into the spine. So we come into tree, into dog pose. Come up now with the right leg, bend the knee in towards the chest and plant the knee between the hands. Go back through the right leg, let the backs of the fingers come onto the ground. So you're making an L shape with the hand, yeah? If that feels dreadfully uncomfortable for you, of course, come back to using the palm of the hand. But when you're doing this, it encourages you to be light on your arms. So you have to come back to the feet and the spine. But it also means that you're opening the wrist. So if you're typing or you're texting a lot or you're doing, you might be doing even more crafting and things at the moment, you're using the hands a lot, it's gonna help you open the wrists. Now let the shoulder blades come back into the spine. Let the breastbone lift up, keep going down through the tailbone. Root into the left little toe to give you that spread through the front of the foot, which helps you release into the hip. Now gently bend the elbows. Let the spine come forward and bring the hands down to the ground. Now with tree pose, I didn't say this, but I'd hope most of you know me well enough that if you're uncomfortable on the knee, you roll over onto the outer thigh. Yeah, you take it off of the knee. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. And up you come with the chest and with the heart, keep letting the tailbone go down. Curl the back toes under, bring the knee in, curl the back toes under a little bit more, bring the knee in a little bit more, come forward with the fingertips. Bring the right foot onto the ground, 
bring the fingertips back, so they're either side of the right foot. You're gonna come into the ball of the back foot, brings you up into lunge pose. Rotate the left foot in, come up with the arms, strong into the feet to bring you into warrior two, yeah? So you've had that openness through the hip in pigeon. Back arm onto back thigh, tailbone releasing you downwards. Front arm onto front thigh, coming up and over, little finger down the outer edge into the little toe. Come back into the foot, all the way up, tail's going down towards the ground. Now remember we did a little bit of this at the start, bend the elbow, let the arm rest very lightly onto the side of the head so you can find more from the hip, shoulder joint, elbow. Good, now breathe out and bring the right fingertips all the way down to the ground, lengthen up through the left fingertips. As you're doing that, and if that doesn't feel right, come back to here, yeah. As you're doing that, can you feel you're working towards getting the shoulders on top of each other? Because that's going to give you that cue to come back into the rotation of the spine. Let the left hand come down, yeah? You're going to bring both hands down to the inside of the right foot. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Let the knee come down, front of the foot on the ground. So you can see I'm at an angle here. Bring the breastbone forward. So the front of that left foot is really relaxed. It's really passive. It's just resting on the ground. So I can let the front of this hip open a little bit more. Then from here, bring the right hand to the outside of the right knee, curl the left toes under, come up away through the right leg and bring the foot down to the ground. Come up now through the left leg, bend the knees and bring the knee between the hands, go back through the right foot. And again, come onto the backs of the fingers. So you've got a real sense of coming upward in the pose. Can you go into the little toe, that tiny little right toe? Can you get it to root into the ground? And where does that bring you in the hip? Let the elbows bend, bring the hands onto the ground and come down with the spine. And again, remember you can always roll over onto that outside of the left leg. Let the breath come in and the breath go out. Now bring the fingertips onto the ground, up you come, curl the back toe under, bring the knee in. Bring the hands a little bit more forward so it's a bit more easier on the spine. Now curl the back toe under, bring the knee in a little bit more. You might want to come up onto the fingertips because you're then going to bring that left foot out. So you're coming almost into that sprint pose, yeah? You're a bit like Usain Bolt this morning. Now, fingertips are on the ground, extend back through the heel, Rotate inwards with the foot, strong into the feet, right arm comes up, then left arm like you're doing a backstroke. Back arm onto back thigh, tailbone straight down to the ground. Arm onto thigh, up and over we come, connection from the little finger into the little toe. Up we come. Now as we come up this time, you're going to relax into the elbow. Keep letting the tail go down towards the ground. Keep coming back to the feet so you come up into the pelvis. And then as you breathe out, could you bring the fingertips all the way down to the ground, staying with that openness through the spine. Now let's the right hand come down to the ground, pivot on the ball of the foot, 
So both of the hands are to the inside of the left foot. Let the knee come down to the ground, bring the front of the foot onto the ground. Maybe even come a little bit more forward with the breastbone, but really relax that back foot. Relax the thigh, soften the thigh as much as you can. Then bring the right hand to the outside of the foot. So the hands are either side of the front foot. Curl the back toe under, come up and away if you want to through the leg. Bring the foot down to the ground. Bend the knees, come back into child's pose. As you come back into child's pose, notice how the hips feel. Hopefully she feels a lot more space now in the front of the hips. And in child's pose, hopefully that will make you relax more through the glutes and through the sacrum. Because if there's this space here, it makes us just relax the thighs a little bit more and then you've got the connection back. Bring the hands forward, come up again into all fours. And then we're going to send the tailbone down and round the spine into cat pose. And then come forward with the chest, forward with the heart, let the tailbone lightly tip up. So as you breathe out, imagine the tailbone extending all the way down towards the knees and then a little bit more down towards the knee. So you find length in the lumbar and that shifts you in the upper spine. Now come forward with the chest and with the heart, bring the shoulder blades, the bottom of the shoulder blades into the spine. So the heart comes forward and the tail can lightly tip up. And then come back into all fours. Bring both of the feet over to the left and let your bottom come back and then come to sit, bringing the legs forward and the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana. So with that last movement, did the hip work give you more movement in Kan Kao? Bring the hands onto the shins and extend up through the crown of the head. Keep the left hand onto the shin, bring the right hand around behind you. So this is a really nice twist if you're pregnant, yeah? because you've got such a lot of space for the baby, even if you're not heavily pregnant, yeah? It's just a really nice way to practice a twist. Bring the right hand on to the right shin and then come around with the left hand. So with that as well, it's also a really nice twist if the spine is tight, if there is anything going on in the spine in the sense that, you know, you, you, it just feels tight, it feels uncomfortable. If you're coming back to a practice and you've had an injury, stay with open twists. Come back and around. We haven't actually done any closed twists, I don't think, this morning, so. And then come back. And around. So a closed twist would be if I start bringing this hand across and start really coming around where I'm closing the space up. I've had something come up on my computer, guys. I can't know what's going on. Computer's running low. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Don't you just love it when your computer goes into doing some sort of update? So stay with that twist, yeah? Staying with that twist from side to side in Baddha Konasana, yeah? There we go, got that out of the way. Brilliant. So, then from here, the next time the right hand comes onto the right shin, bring the right foot back into the inside of the thigh. Come up with the arms, breathe out, bring the spine forward, bring the fingertips either side of that front leg and bring your gaze to the big toe. Breath's coming in and out. I'm just going a little bit out. Should I?
Come up with the arms and bring the thumbs onto the crown of the head. Let the elbows come forward. Keep lifting up. So you're coming underneath the breastbone, going down through the tailbone, lifting up through the crown of the head. Come up with the arms. Let the left hand come down onto the left chin and open out through the arms. So now the breastbone's coming over towards the knee. Up you come with the arm. Send the left hand away so you're lengthening the spine downwards and come over. Come over as far as it feels comfortable for you. But again, remember that connection from the little finger into the lower ribs, into the top of the hips. Up you come with the arm, hand comes onto the ground, up with the left arm, bring that left big toe down into the ground, the left little toe into the ground, and up you come. Can you get the whole of the foot, the whole of the left foot on the ground at all? So you're not there, but so you're there. <coughs> so you can get that connection again from the little toe into the little thing. Bring the bottom down to the ground, come back to the centre, bring the soles of the feet together, back into Baddha Konasana, go away through the right foot, brings the left sole of the foot into the thigh, bring the fingertips onto the ground, creep them forward, same way as you've done Trikonasana, uh, Warrior 3, where you're coming forward, you're letting the pelvis go over the thigh, that's what you're doing now, but keep the lift up through the breastbone. Bring the hands together in Namaste. Begin to come up with the spine. You come up with the spine, let the elbows bend. Bring the thumbs onto the crown of the head. Now lift the crown upwards, upwards, upwards. But keep these arms, remember these arms are back into the shoulder socket. And the elbows come forward. Come up with the arms. Bring the hands, the right hand onto the right shin, the left hand behind you. Up you come with the right arm. And then brings the right hand down. Let's the left arm come up. It comes up and over as far as it's comfortable for you. And then down you come, brings the hand onto the ground. You're gonna let that right big toe come in. You're gonna see it from the back now. And then the right little toe goes down onto the ground to bring you up. And really try to get as much of that, you know, the whole of the sole of the foot onto the ground. Bring the bottom down to the ground, come back to the centre and extend both of the legs away, but keep a little bend into the knees and come up through the crown of the head. So you're really taking it off the hamstrings. Have a little walk on the bottom. So you're on the sitting bones, you can really come up through the sitting bones. And now let the knees open outwards, as though you were going to go into Baddha Konasana and the soles of the feet come together. But they don't touch completely, yeah? You're going to come in to this. There's a little bit of space between them that you can get your hands in and you can let your knees open outwards a little bit more. Lift up through the breastbone, and that might make you want to bring the heels in a little bit closer towards you. Keep that lift up right onto the tip of the sit bones, yeah? And then you're gonna go away through the legs and keep the lift in the breastbone. That's the secret with this one, yeah? Keep the lift in the breastbone because the minute you let the spine sag, yeah, you're going to start rolling onto the sacrum. But if you can keep that lift up of the breastbone, good. Now relax the knees, bring the feet onto the ground. You can come out of it that way, or you can keep hold of the feet and roll onto the spine and let your legs come over your head if you're feeling a little bit playful. It depends how you feel this morning. But then let the whole of the spine come down to the ground. Bring the arms out to the sides. Let the eyes close for a moment. Let the breath come in and the breath go out. So as you're doing that, I'm just trying to see if I've got any birds close by. I want you to imagine the sound of birdsong. 
if you can't hear birds, yeah? Let the arms come out to the side, stand into the balls of the feet, let the heels lift. So you roll onto your right little toe, left big toe, and let the knees come over towards the right. Let them come down as far as it's comfortable for you, but use the sides of the feet to support the legs. Let the right arm come across the body, turn the head and the gaze towards the hands, relax the body. Remember how you're using the feet is going to support how you're using the spine. So because you're on those sides of the feet, you're supporting your legs, you're supporting your spine. So you can let all the muscle relax, yeah? You shouldn't be having to tense your thighs to keep the posture. If your knees don't want to come down and you've got a cushion to hand, stick a cushion or a book or something underneath the knee so you can really let the muscles relax. Let the right arm open outwards. Roll through the balls of the feet. Come into the left little toe, right big toe. So you come all the way over. Let the left arm come across the body, turn the head and the gaze towards the hands. Let the breath come in and out. Let the arm open outwards. Let the knees come back. Let the hands come down the sides of the body. Bring the heels in a little bit closer back towards the bottom. But still keep that contact. Big toe joint, little toe joint, inner heel, outer heel. Yeah. So when you come into those points of the feet, you feel that little change in the legs. The legs become more active. Stand down into the feet. Pelvis wants to begin to lift. We always think when we do this very often that we've got to push up through the hips and through the pelvis. We don't. We go down into the feet and down into the feet. Brings the shins up into the knees. Let's the thighs move and the pelvis comes up. Feel that you can bring the breastbone up towards the tip of the nose. And that's going to lift the upper spine. Keep the gaze straight up, don't tuck the chin into the chest, keep that gaze straight up towards the ceiling. Now relax the belly as well, okay? Sometimes to be here is going to give you a lot more length in the spine because you're going to send the tailbone forward and keep the belly relaxed rather than being here and it all feels very pushed and tight, yeah? So play with that and see how it feels for you. Keep coming back to the feet, big toe joint, little toe joint, inner heel, outer heel. Postures don't need to be big movements to have a huge effect. Sometimes smaller is better because you're more likely to release in the pose if you're not overexerting the body. Let the bottom come down to the ground. As the bottom comes down to the ground, let both legs come up into the air. You might feel you want to come up into shoulder stand if you're a little bit more practiced. So relax the knees and let the knees, the thighs move backwards and forwards until the pelvis wants to roll. Once the pelvis wants to come off the ground freely, bring yourself up into shoulder stand. If you're like me this morning, I feel myself really tightening in the neck. So I'm not going to do it this morning, yeah, because I don't know, for some reason or another, my body's feeling a bit tight, yeah, so I'll just stay with a little bit of this movement. And then let the feet come down to the ground. Let the arms 
rest. Let the back of the head rest onto the ground. Let the gaze come straight up towards the ceiling. Imagine that lovely blue sky we'd have above us at Marble Hill. You might have a lovely blue sky above you because you might be practicing in your garden, which would be glorious. So let the back of the body rest now. Let it rest onto the ground. And as it rests on the ground, imagine your bones almost hovering off of the ground because it has the skin, the muscle, the tissue, the fascia, it has all of that underneath the balance. So let the muscle melt, let the skin melt, let everything soften and relax so that the bones can now rest on the ground. And with that, in the same way that we practice semi-supine twists, where we use the feet, the little toe side of the foot, the bones can rest without holding in the muscles. So let the body go. Let the body on that next exhalation go. <sighs> And if you feel that one part of the body still feels tense, whether it's a thigh, a shoulder, a jaw, a neck, as you breathe in and out, feel that when you breathe in, you can draw the breath into that area of the body. And when you breathe out, you can bring that sense of ah into that area of the body. And if that helps, great. If it doesn't, maybe just take a step back from that area of the body now. So we did a little bit of breath practice last week. We're going to do some more now, but we're going to stay lying down to do it. So we're going to keep it very, very simple. We're going to breathe in for a count of four, pause for a count of one, breathe out for a count of four, and pause for a count of one. Breathe in for a count of four, pause, breathe out for a count of four, pause, breathe in for a count of four, pause, Breathe out for a count of four. Pause. Breathe in for a count of five. Pause. Breathe out for a count of five. Pause. Breathe in for a count of five. Pause. Breathe out for a count of five. Pause. Breathe in for a count of four. Pause, breathe out 
for a count of four. Four. Come back to natural inhalation and exhalation. So after breathing in and out for five, how did it feel to suddenly breathe in for four? So come back to that lovely, long, deeper inhalation and exhalation. And the eyes may be closed or open. Letting the breath come in and the breath go out. Noticing how the body feels. So gently now wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes to bring some awareness back to your bodies. Stand away through the feet as you did in the dog pose so you find that little bit of space in the sockets. And then stand away through the arms, whether that's bringing them over the head for you or just lengthening them down the sides of the body, whatever you need to do with that. And then let yourself roll over onto your right side and bend your knees and bring your left hand down in front of your chest, lengthen your way through your left leg and bring yourself up to sit. And as you come to sit, bring your hands together in Namaste. Thank your body for its practice this morning. We're gonna do another little arm. Just again, to keep the pipes nice and clear, it's a brilliant way to keep the lungs open. So we're gonna breathe in, and as we breathe out, just let the sound come out, yeah? Oh. Have yourselves great weekend enjoy the weather be safe be well and i'll see you next week lots of love namaste bye my lovelies thanks tina lovely to see you see you next week my darlings lots of love bye